Hey y'all, I'm Dr. Aaron Miller, physical therapist and orthopedic trained, fellowship trained therapist here. I am reviewing sciatic nerve glides, sciatic nerve testing, sciatic nerve retesting, and the false positives that you can get when you perform a sciatic nerve test in the clinic. I've seen it all the time and I wanna show you how I do it because I think we can rule in and rule out if it is a true disc issue or if there's something else that is causing your patient's stress, pain, or stretch in the leg. So with me here today, I have Shanae. She's a fellow colleague and PT of mine. She's going to be helping me out. And I'm just using a simple stretch right strap to kind of show what the sciatic nerve is going to be doing through the testing here. It runs right from anywhere from L2 to L5 through posterior buttock, posterior thigh, closest we can down to tibial nerve and the anchor to her foot. Um, and we'll show the significance of that here in a minute. But um, I first wanna go through what normal sciatic nerve testing is. So in order for the sciatic nerve test to be positive and significant, and we'll talk about that in a minute, is it has to be the patient's pain that they come in with, it has to be different from one leg to the other, and it has to change when you move a distal body part. Uh, if those three things are po all positive, then you can actually say that there is there is nerve involvement that that could potentially lead you up into the lumbar spine. So, the first thing I need to go through is how do we properly test for sciatic nerve. So, what you typically will do is you'll take the patient's leg passively, and I'm going to lift it up. And Shanae, just tell me when you feel stretching, pulling, or pain. Don't care where or when. Just let me know. And you can see the strap is also stretching along with her limb. Okay, now normal value is about 70 to 80 degrees. I don't think she's there yet, but we all, and, and, and so does she have neural tension? We don't know. So what I'm gonna have her do is lift the distal body part. So lift your head and does that change? Yes. Okay, so that's positive, but is it significant? She's not having any leg pain. She's not having anything like that or any back pain. So I would say it's positive, but not significant. And then we can check the other, and of course you check the other side to see if there's any differences because that could yield some, some issue because you want it to be bilaterally symmetrical. So the question is, okay, and I've seen this a lot in the clinic, what happens if you lift the leg and this time I'm gonna have her lift her head and there's no change, she doesn't feel any change, but there's still tension in the leg which you might get a lot of times in the clinic. Does that mean it's discal pathology? Does that mean you have an issue? I think not, okay? Because what I think can actually happen is that that nerve, we know it travels through joint, through muscle, through many other tissue. And I think if there is a problem at the hip for the mobility and at the SI joint, and even at the lumbar spine, at the facet joint, if any one of those three areas are blocking the path of the nerve, to get a positive test, maybe not significant, but a positive test, because they're not moving well, I think that can create a false positive for a straight leg raise test. So to show you with the, the strap how the nerve would respond, so let's say Shanae has a hip issue and she doesn't have full passive mobility here. So I'm just gonna bring the strap to the side to show you, and we're just gonna kinda anchor it down there, still tracking into her lumbar spine. So if, it block, if it's blocked at her hip, and we lift it up passively, stretching, pulling pain, it stops it there, okay? And you can see that is taut, that is tensioned, right? And if she lifts her head, it doesn't change anything down here because I believe that the restrictions at her hip. Now this can also happen at the SI joint, so if you wouldn't mind wrapping that up there, okay? So same position, but now if your SI joint is locked or, or not moving properly, and however you test for that is you're up to you, but again, you're gonna get some tension, and it, I mean, that's it. It does not move. It's taut, it's tensioned. But if, again, if she lifts her head, no change. It's just taut, right? So this can create in a situation where we get false positives in the clinic with our patients because you might think, oh, I'm just, I have to treat the disc because it's a positive straight leg raise test. You have to make sure it's significant uh, and then it mimics, or it's different on the other side, and then it changes with a distal head or movement from, from a distal body part. If those three things don't happen, then you have to dive in deeper as to why there's still tension in this leg. Now, I'll tell you, when you clear the hip or the SI joint or even the facet joint in the lumbar spine, 
if that's an issue and you go and retest, what you might find, just like when nothing is blocked initially, you might find, oh man, her leg goes much higher and now it does change when she lifts her head. So now you're back to it is positive. But is it significant? That depends on your patient's presentation and how they present themselves as far as symptoms and movement impairments as well. So this is just to kind of clear up sciatic nerve and make sure that things are moving uh, and also what can create false positives for you. If you have any questions, let me know. Hopefully it's helpful uh, to kind of weed through things in your assessment as you're going through with patients. So thanks a lot. Bye.